To start out, you can either import your image and work on it from there, or you can create a new document with specific dimensions. If you're importing your image, you can just drag and drop it and start from there, or you can come up and hit File, and then New, and then from here you can input whatever dimensions you need to input here. Now as a quick recommendation, a lot of platforms like Shopify recommend using 2048 by 2048 for product images, so we're actually going to roll with that in this video, but if you're going to be uploading to a specific platform, I'd recommend checking out their guidelines. But for now, we're just going to roll off the 2048 by 2048, and we'll hit Create. Now that we've created our document here, we can go ahead and import our photo, so I'm just going to drag and drop that in here. And then you can grab the Move tool up here and just go ahead and move it into place wherever you'd like. I'm actually going to be making this photo for this middle one here. Now since this is an angle, we can go ahead and adjust this and try and get it as straight as possible. And then as a quick tip, if you want to, you can hit Control or Command R to bring up your rulers up here, and you can drag from them over. So now you have a guide so that you can make sure that your photo is going to be nice and straight. And even centered, just like that. And I think that looks good for this photo. Then what we can do is go ahead and press Control or Command J on your layer, and that will create a duplicate layer. Then with that duplicate layer, we're going to come over and hit the Selection Brush tool, and we will just zoom in a little bit here, and then you can just select the product that you will be using. But now with this, I'm actually going to come up and hit Refine, and we're going to actually dial in the selection to make sure it's the best possible selection that we can get. So now with this Refine selection, we can actually check out the different previews here. So if you want to, you can actually see how roughly how it's going to look like when we're done. And as you can see, there are some parts over here that it just kind of missed, so we can go ahead and select those and paint over them, and it will try and correct that. You can always select foreground or background depending on if you need to get rid of something or if you need to add something. So for example, with this one, if we want to get rid of this little part here with the background selected here, it will actually go ahead and get rid of that for us. And you can see it did a pretty good job with our selection here. I just might want to select a little bit more of this part over here. And I think this is going to be good enough for our needs here. You can go ahead and check out different previews if you need to. So as you can see with the black and white, we're actually missing a little bit more here. So we can go ahead and select that as well. And then once you think you have a good enough selection with this, we can come down and hit output and then just go ahead and make sure that is going to be mask and then hit apply. Now we can actually go ahead and disable our other background layer. So now just to make sure that we actually have a white background, we can go ahead and hit add pixel layer and then drag that pixel layer below your product image. Then once you've done that, you can go ahead and hit G to select your paint bucket tool. And then with the color white, we can go ahead and paint on our pixel layer with pure white. And now just like that, we actually have our product photo done. Now for most people, this would probably be good enough. And I'm sure many of you would stop here, but I'm going to show you two other things you can do to actually make your image a little bit more interesting. Now the first thing I'll show is how to add a shadow to marry the product to the background just a little bit better. Now there is a couple different methods of doing this. The easiest way would probably be with layer effects. So to do this, we're actually going to right click on our layer here and then just hit rasterize and trim. And that will basically just turn the mask into one layer. Now with that layer selected, we can come down and hit layer effects here and then select outer shadow and just hit the checkbox. And then you can adjust these settings until you get something that you like here. So now after messing around with the settings, I think this one looks pretty good. So you can actually see the before and the after of what we did there. And as you can see, it just kind of adds a quick little pleasing shadow to our image now. So now another method of this is we can actually disable this and I'll close out of this. Now we can actually come over to our shape tool over here and select the ellipse tool. And then we can just draw a quick little ellipse down here. Then with that, we can come up and hit the stroke and we'll get rid of the stroke and we'll change the fill color to black. Now I'm just going to adjust this so it fits the bottom here. We want it just slightly bigger than the actual bottle. I'm going to actually hit V on my keyboard to select the Move tool. And we'll just move it in place until it's just at the bottom. And then we can just come over and move this layer below our product image. And then we can come down and hit Live Filter. And then we're going to come up and add a Gaussian Blur. And then you can just adjust the radius until you get something that you like here. So I think somewhere right around there looks pretty good. So now you can see the before and the after of adding our little shadow on the bottom there. And then with that layer selected, you can always adjust your opacity as well to make it however strong you want. And so those are the two different methods of adding a shadow. Now the last thing I'm going to show you here is how to actually add a reflection like this. 
So I'm going to get rid of our little shadow here, and then I'm going to select our product layer, and we're going to hit Control or Command J on this one as well, and then come up and hit Arrange, and then we're going to flip it vertically. And then we'll just move this into place towards the very bottom here, right around there, and then we're just going to come over and move this layer below our other product photo. Now with this, you can either just adjust the opacity here, so that it's kind of faded out like that. Or what you can do is you can come down and hit Mask Layer, and then we'll come over and select the Gradient tool. And then for the type, we're going to change it to Linear. And then we're just going to make sure that we have a black and white gradient here. And then you can adjust this gradient however you'd like. So as you can see, as we come down here, we're kind of fading out the product like that. So now it creates kind of like a nice fade look to the reflection. Now, obviously, if you wanted to as well, you could come in and resize your layers so that more of the reflection is showing. But I think this gives you something that looks pretty good. And with that, you are pretty much all done. So now the last step we have here is just to export our photo. So we can come up to File and then Export. And then I'd probably recommend exporting to JPEG since this is mostly going to be used on the web. And then we can set our quality to around 80 to 85 just to give you a good balance of file size to quality. And now the last thing I want to make sure you check is come down to the ICC profile here and then select sRGB. Now the reason we're doing this is because most browsers and devices use this to display and it will make sure that your colors don't change when you upload the photo to whatever platform you or your clients are using. But then once you have those settings, all you have to do is come down and hit export here, and then you can save it to wherever you need to save it to. But that pretty much does it for this video. If you guys like this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you have any other videos or topics you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.